Why do I not discuss religious fundamentalism more often and more in depth? Many people consider you a religious apologist as a consequence. Well, it's okay if people consider me a religious apologist. I am a religious apologist. So an apologist is someone who makes an argument for something. And I'm constantly making arguments for a religious perspective on life, a religious orientation towards life. Uh, an orientation that's centered in, in meaning. An orientation that's centered in desire for all things to thrive insofar as that's possible. A desire for people to speak the truth and act out the truth and act responsibility act responsibly in all of that. And I think that there's some, something transcendently necessary about all of that. And I think it is the antidote to hell. So that, that makes me a religious apologist. The fundamentalists? I don't know which fundamentalists you mean. If you mean the Christian fundamentalists, well, I understand where they're coming from, you know. I think the Christian... Christianity is an ethical framework above all else and it's predicated in a story about the way the world is constituted and and the story provides the foundation for that ethic and the ethic unites the community and gives people direction. This is a big deal. Now if the story is challenged, if the foundational story is challenged, which is certainly what happened as a consequence of the rise of empirical science, then the foundation for the ethic starts to starts to shake and tremble and that threatens the ethic but the ethic is what holds people together and gives them direction so you can't just lose the ethic so the fundamentalist Christians are all short-circuited because they know that there's something to the ethic and they understand that the foundation has been shaken but they don't know what to do about it so they insist that the foundation has not been shaken and I understand that. So I think the way out of that is to understand that the truths that govern ethics and the truths that govern the description of the world as a material place are not the same. They're not, they're not, they're not of the same kind. Um, how they're related, I'm not exactly sure, but there's no simple one-to-one -one relationships. You can't describe the world and then immediately extract out an ethic. It's partly because there are just too many ways of describing the world. So this is the, the, the fundamental point of difference as far as I can tell between Sam Harris and I and hopefully what we'll discuss in the summer. So, so that's the Christian fundamentalists and I don't really see that they're a particularly threatening group as far as I can tell. I mean, they're certainly not in the ascendance by any stretch of the imagination. Um, they're not involved in any particularly reprehensible political behavior unless you count conservatism. And it is by no means obvious that they're even holding their ground in the culture war. So I'm not very worried about them. Um, Islamic fundamentalism? That's a whole different story. But I don't know enough about it to discuss it intelligently. I don't understand Islam. It, I'm concerned about its, what would you call, compatibility with, with the democratic West. It isn't obvious to me that there are medium to high functioning Muslim democracies. I suppose Turkey's the closest one, but Turkey's pretty, pretty shaky at the moment. I think that the failure to separate church and state or even if we don't call it a failure, the fact that church and state hasn't been technically separated in Islam makes it difficult to understand how it's possible for Islam and modern Western democratic traditions to coexist. I don't know how that can be, that gap can be bridged. Um, you could say, well, with goodwill, and let's, let's hope that's the case. Um, that doesn't mean I don't think that Muslims can live in a modern Western democracy. I mean, there are many, many kinds of Muslims, just like there are many kinds of Jews and Christians. And so, and then there's the problem of the 
current proclivity of the extreme end of the Muslim fundamentalist world to become, to be very violent in very many ways. And so, you know, and I'm not a great admirer of the Saudis, to say the least. I don't appreciate their brand of, of Wahhabi Islam, and I don't appreciate their exporting of that view with their petrodollars to the rest of the world. So, I guess that's what I have to say about fundamentalists.